All right, now, as an anxious person, there is nothing better and nothing more calming than feeling like you have some, than knowing what's coming next and feeling like you have some degree of control of the future. Now, that's what planning does for me. I'm a big planner. I plan just about everything in life that could be planned, uh, so much so that when I was um, a young kid, I actually printed out um, a checklist to carefully plan out my before school routine. Um, and I had really mundane tasks on there, like wake up, wash face, brush teeth. Um, and after I completed each task, I'd run over and I'd tick it off. Um, and I felt like that really set me up for success. But I'm a little better now. I no longer plan to that meticulous level as a very disciplined 10 year old. Um, but I wanted to share that story to paint a little picture um, about why planning um, has played such an important role in my personal life. And now equally it plays such an important role in my professional life. And that's what we're gonna focus on today. So my name is Christina Rostevsky and I'm a product manager for Confluence Whiteboards. And today I wanna to share with you three key things that contribute to the art of efficient planning. Firstly, I wanna discuss why planning is vital for team success. Then we're gonna dive into some key principles of successful planning sessions. And lastly, I wanna take you through some real life examples of how my team at Atlassian um, runs our planning sessions, uh, particularly making use of the new whiteboards feature in Confluence. Now, regardless what level of detail you're planning at, planning provides two key benefits that are vital for team success. The first is being goal-oriented. Planning helps give us a sense of purpose and direction towards what we're trying to achieve. The second is accountability. Planning allows us to understand exactly what we're going to do and when we're expected to do it by. Now, from my time spent building products, I've come to realize there are four key principles that can help make sure your planning sessions are both efficient and effective. Create a shared understanding. Now, at the start of every session, ensure the team has a shared understanding of the why. What are your high-level goals and how are you tracking against them? What are you and your team really setting out to solve? This is super important as it helps the team understand the why behind what they're working towards. Identify your top priority tasks. What are the next most important things you need to be working on to successfully reach those goals? Is it setting up an email campaign? Is it building a certain feature? Working this out will ensure that you focus on the most critical tasks. Assign roles and timelines. Think about who should be responsible for executing on certain tasks and when they need to do this by. Is it your engineering manager? Is it your marketer? Is it your analyst? Does this need to be done now, next week, next month? Having this sort of thing, having this stuff sorted really helps contribute to an efficient planning session. And lastly, for a great planning session, especially in today's remote world, Make sure planning is both interactive and fun. Bringing everyone along the journey of planning really helps hammer home the point, uh, really helps hammer home what you're setting out to achieve. Okay, so you know why planning is important. You've heard how we can make sure our planning sessions are both efficient and effective. But what does this really look like in practice? The easiest way for me to share this is to show you how my team, the Confluence Whiteboards team, approaches various types of planning. So today we're gonna to go through three examples. We're gonna start at the high level and I'm gonna share how our team plan out our roadmap. Then we'll get a little deeper and we'll, and we'll look at how we plan out our major work streams. Now those are the things that make up your roadmap. Then we'll get even more granular and we'll take a look at how our team execute on those work streams by running weekly sprint planning sessions. Okay, let's talk through planning a roadmap. A roadmap is a shared source of truth that outlines the direction and progress of a product over time. Now, when we started our roadmap planning session, we used a prioritization template in Confluence Whiteboards, and this helps break down the session into three key parts. Goal sharing, ideation, so brainstorming ideas, 
and then prioritization. So prioritizing those ideas you've just brainstormed on a matrix. Now our team usually do this um, every few months. We gather insight from customers and research, and this helps us decide what we build next. So in the first section of the whiteboard, we run through our goals. These are represented here as smart links, which are rich unfurls of links. So we have some Atlas ticket smart links here, and these help us see directly from the whiteboard how we're tracking against our key goals. For, the, for context, Atlas is an Atlassian software tool that allows you to track high level company and team level goals. This helped create that shared sense of understanding so that everyone could keep those company and team level goals in mind while we're building our roadmap. Moving over to the second, session, second section of the whiteboard. Here, the team will begin to ideate on potential features we could build. Now, generally, a product manager will come in and drop a few ideas in before the session uh, based on things that we've previously discussed or that we've been tracking over time. But together as a team, we'll set a timer for, let's say, 10 minutes, and with all our engineers and designers, we'll start brainstorming as many ideas as possible. Until we have something that looks a little bit like this. Now, Whiteboard was the perfect place for us to do this because it was a free form, infinite canvas where we were able to bring in different types of content. So those Atlas ticket smart links, there was a Loom video in there before as well. And we we're able to present our work the way we want to and collaborate in a way that previously hasn't been possible before in Confluence. Now, sometimes our team will add stamps to reflect, to express how they feel about certain ideas. So stamps are super helpful for that as well. OK, so we've got a bunch of ideas generated, but it's time to prioritize them. We used an impact versus urgency matrix. So that means uh, how impactful will this feature be to the user? And urgency meaning how urgently do we need to build this? Have we received a ton of feedback about a certain feature? Are there market changes that we need to quickly adapt to? Now, in this example, we use the impact versus urgency axes. You can choose uh, any other framework that suits your team. You could do impact versus effort, value versus risk, whatever works best for your team. Now, another important note about this prioritization session is that it was a relative prioritization session. So not only did we discuss ideas based on where they sat between the axes of the matrix, but we also discussed the ideas importance against one another. Now, this ensured that we were prioritizing the most high value, high and critical features. So we started by pulling in an idea from our ideation session. And together as a team, we'd have a discussion about where it sits on the matrix. Now, we had a rough guess about where it would fit after that discussion. And it's not super important to get this right at the start because you, as you pull in more ideas, the, uh, the placement of those ideas will shuffle around based on their relative priority. So again, we, sorry, we would um, follow the same process. We'd bring in a second idea, also discussing relative importance until we had something that looked like this. Once, um, so once we had all the stickies um, with all our ideas on the matrix, we added these two lines. Now these two lines divided the ideas into three key categories. These were must do, nice to do, and won't do. We wanted to take the ideas from the must do category and move them into a more structured tool so that we could start tracking work against them. So we brought these stickies to a separate section um, on the whiteboard. Now a section is a frame or a bounded area on a whiteboard where you can place content inside and it will be grouped all together. And then we bulk converted those ideas using our convert sticky to Jira feature. So we selected our site, project, and issue type. So in this case, we selected Epic, and we assigned some rough story points and hit create. And there we created uh, six uh, SmartLink Jira cards. Now, in the case where we wanted to edit one of those Jira issues that we just created, we can open up the issue in its preview state from the whiteboard. Here, you can add in any additional details. So maybe we want to go in and adjust the story points that we added there. But you'll also notice here, underneath uh, web links is uh, another link, and that is automatically and that is a backlink to the whiteboard that has been automatically generated 
so that whoever lands on this issue in the future can understand the context of where it came from. Then to document our final roadmap and share this out with the organization and other key stakeholders, we copied the link from the whiteboard, pasted it onto a Confluence page and selected the embed state so that others could see how we landed on what those top priority items were. So there you have it. That was our roadmap planning session. Start by sharing your goals, generate and discuss ideas together as a team, and then prioritize on a matrix of your choice. So to summarize, when conducting a roadmap planning session yourself, create a shared understanding. Start by anchoring your team with the most important goals in order to help everyone understand the why. And secondly, consider using a relative prioritization. Discussing the relative priority of roadmap items ensures that you focus on the most critical tasks. Okay, so we've covered high level planning, planning out a roadmap. But how do you actually plan the work streams that you've just put on your roadmap? A work stream is a multi-week piece of work that can often be mapped to an epic in JIRA. Now, in the early days of whiteboards, uh, when we functioned, uh, we used to function like a scrappy startup. We just had a few people all working together in Sydney. But as we've moved towards becoming a more native part of Confluence, our team has grown, and we've realized we need a more efficient way to get alignment. That's where one pages come in. Now, one pager is a source of truth for a work stream. It tracks what's being built, by who, and how. In the wise words of one of our Confluence Whiteboards architects, Abby Keyshaw, one pages help create alignment between functions from day one. Now, whenever we kick off an Epic or a work stream in our team, the absolute first thing we do is create a one pager in Confluence. This page outlines all the need to know things about that project or work stream, including what are our goals? Why are we building this feature? Who's building this feature? And a rough breakdown of what building that feature will look like. This helps ensure that everyone stays on the same page, pun intended. So what does this look like in practice? Let's take a look at an example project that we ran a little while ago. Now, when we were working, this is from when we were working on improving, on building our collaboration infrastructure and making sure it was scalable and reliable. Typically, the product manager will start the one pager, but they'll work with other functions like design and engineering to help fill in the details. So let's take a look at what is actually in these one pages that I've been talking about. Now, I'm not going to go into depth in each section, but I just want to give you a rough understanding of exactly what we include in these one pages. So starting from the top, we have this table. Now, this table acts as an executive summary. So it covers all those high level details that you need to know and you need to have quick access to, like relevant links, might be your links to design files that are in Figma, might be links to your Atlas goals, uh, and it also has um, the, the most important people that you need to contact for this project. Now, you'll also notice in this table, we have an embed to a, another Confluence whiteboard here. And this is from a network of teams play that we ran for this particular project. Uh, so we did this so that we could map out who our key stakeholders were uh, and any other adjacent teams to really understand who needs to be involved in this project and whether we've got good cross-team collaboration practices set up. All right, moving into the guts of the page. We start by defining the problem. We explicitly, we explicitly lay out the problem on the page so that everyone involved is really clear and aware on what the problem is that we're trying to solve. Then we'll articulate how solving this problem fits into our strategy. We wanna make sure that we're investing in a problem that makes sense and aligns with our goals. Then we'll add context on what we know so far. Generally, there'll be some prior art or maybe some previous decisions that, that were made that will influence how we approach tackling this problem. Lastly, we'll, we'll set up some success criteria for that project or work stream. These will generally be some sort of metrics that'll help us understand what our definition of done is. Then moving on to the actual feature. So we'll break down the engineering work into user stories to understand what customer value is being shipped and when. Then we'll also capture other things on this page, like analytics or metrics that we want to track during this work stream. Uh, we'll also capture any decisions, 
any open questions or assumptions, and actions. Now we like to centralize all these things in this one page so that it can be the true source of truth, true source of truth, so that it can be the source of truth for the work stream. We don't want any open, we don't want any decisions or actions left in Slack or on a Zoom call. Now once we've gone through this and filled out this one pager and everyone's aligned on the approach, we'll move to a whiteboard to start breaking down the work from JIRA. So this is what the work looked like once it was completely broken down, but I want to give you an understanding of how we got to this beautiful visual. So we started by creating a section on a whiteboard. Now this section reflects one release of that work stream. We then add in the user story to understand the customer value that's being shipped through this release on a sticky note in the bottom left corner. Then we'll bring in issues from the relevant JIRA epic and organize these on the whiteboard uh, in the order that they need to be completed in. Then to more accurately reflect the work breakdown, we'll highlight the relationship between each issue to reflect any dependencies between pieces of work. So I do this by drawing a connecting line between those two JIRA issue smart links, hitting link issues, and then I will select my relationship type. So in this case, it's blocked by, hit link, and now that issue link has been created, not only on the whiteboard, but it's also been created in JIRA. Then, similar to our previous example, you can also view that issue in more detail by selecting the preview mode. Here you can go in and add any updates or any additional detail. And you'll also notice that issue link that we just created is also reflected here. And that's our final state for release one. We continued on with that process to come up with this. Then we'll add this whiteboard to our one pager. Uh, to serve as a reference point for how we plan on uh, approaching this work stream. So to summarize planning out a work stream, make sure you align all functions by starting with a one pager. This will save you many alignment meetings down the track, which I'm sure we'd all appreciate. And try mapping out your work in a freeform surface before moving to a structured tool. This helps you clearly see any relationships or dependencies between your work. All right, time to get to the most granular type of planning of the three that we're covering today, sprint planning. Now a sprint for our team is a one week time period where we set out to complete a certain amount of work. Now it's no surprise the Confluence Whiteboards team uses a whiteboard for sprint planning but I wanna tell you two important reasons why we do this. The first is that we wanna test our own product as frequently as possible. And the second is that we found using this infinite canvas and unstructured space, it was a super valuable mechanism to centralize and share a bunch of different content with our team. It made planning a lot more visual, interactive and fun. Now at a high level, our sprint planning in a whiteboard covers a few things. We cover team announcements, a design review, we do a goals and roadmap review, and we also run a capacity planning exercise. And then we, uh, after running through these, we move into JIRA. So starting off, we get all of the team onto a Zoom call and we begin with announcements. So here we'll call out uh, any key information that we feel the team needs to know. So maybe there was an important company announcement, we might link to a blog there by inserting a Confluence page, uh, maybe we have a new joiner. And we do this so that everyone in the team can get across critical updates and share these in a timely manner. Next, we go through a design review. Now this is a chance for the design team to call out what they're working on and share this with the wider team. So here you'll notice the smart link embeds of Figma files. So anyone in the team can take a look at what the designers are working on without leaving the whiteboarding tool. Following our design review, we'll move, we move into a goals and roadmap review. So here we'll review the team's goals via the SmartLink Atlas tickets, and we'll see how these ladder up into the wider organization. This is super important to remind the team what it is that we're working towards and why. We find it helpful to keep these here for people to refer back to every week in sprint planning, and also if we have any new joiners who want to uh, 
make themselves more aware of uh, what our team's goals are. Then we'll take a look at our roadmap through the JIRA embed state there that's, um, that's in that section. And we'll tr see how we're tracking with our current work streams and see if we need any additional capacity uh, or additional time. Then we move into a really fun capacity planning exercise. Now here the aim is to understand where we're at in terms of resourcing for the week. You'll see here the streams of work uh, are represented here in different sections and our engineers are represented by those circles. We then move these around depending on availability and priority. And this serves as the source of truth for this week. So we start by moving one engineer into our on-call support section. We have another engineer who's away. And we do this until everyone is assigned into a work stream. Next, we have a section on our whiteboard that shows any important engineering dashboards we want to highlight for the week. So in this week's session, we have an embedded smart link of an Atlassian analytics chart showing our cycle time. We'll review this and any other relevant dashboards each week to see if we need to make any improvements. Now, after we've run through this whiteboard, we break off into breakout rooms on Zoom and we'll assign work uh, from our JIRA backlog. So, to summarize sprint planning. When sprint planning, visually centralize key pieces of information. This is super valuable as it helps bring your team along the journey in a more interactive way. Lastly, consider using a freeform surface. We find having an unstructured space allows us to be super flexible in the way we plan. Visualizing who is doing what when you have a number of work streams going on at once and a large engineering team is really helpful. We also find it's a bit more personalized and fun this way. All right, so to give you the ultra condensed version of this talk in three key takeaway slides. Number one, something we all know, planning is super important. It helps us be goal oriented, gives us a goal to work towards, and it helps us be accountable. Some key principles for making sure your planning session is both efficient and effective. Create that shared understanding amongst the team. Identify what your top priority tasks are. Assign roles and timelines. And lastly, make it interactive and fun. Planning and practice. Consider using a freeform surface. Now our team has found that this has allowed us to run super clear and flexible planning sessions. But there are definitely multiple surfaces to conduct your work in, and it's up to you to try and find out uh, what works best for your team. This approach works best for my team, but definitely see what suits your team's style. If you do have any questions about planning and want to learn more about whiteboards in more detail, feel free to have a chat to me at the Confluence booth, and our head of product will also be there too to answer any of your questions. If you want to try a similar style of planning to our team, sign up for the Confluence Whiteboards beta waitlist at atlassian.com forward slash whiteboards. You can also sign up um, at the iPads at the Confluence booth. Thank you so much for listening.